Greetings, citizens of the verse. My name is Deviant Null, and welcome to the first episode of the HLN Citizen Cast. This is a podcast style show where I share what it's like to be part of a Star Citizen organization. Now, keep in mind, I'm a brand new player. I'm not very good at playing Star Citizen, and I don't even know how I ended up in this organization, but what I can tell you is that it's been the most fun I've ever had playing video games. So I'm on my way to meet two of our org members, Vice Admiral Fishbowl and Captain Nod Allen, and what I have in mind is just to hang out in the verse and talk about all things Star Citizen and see where it takes us. Now, if you do find this interesting, please give this video a like and consider subscribing. And hey, maybe you could be the next member of the HLN group. So check the links in the description for more info. But without further ado, Vice Admiral Fishbowl and Captain Nod Allen, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourselves and tell us who you are and what you do in the HLN group. Well, I'll get started. Um, hi, I am uh, Vice Admiral Fishbowl. I am the second in command of the HLN group and one of its founding members. Um, I run the day-to-day -day operations of the entire org in conjunction with our admiral, uh, Selco 13. We are the two main leadership figures within the org. Um, his role is more direction and overall just general administration, and mine is in the nitty-gritty of... Um, of everything that the org does so I, I look over all of our divisions i handle things like this you know where i participate in all of the things that uh make our org so cool and that's that's about it cool captain not allen uh well as you said i'm captain not allen or just allen and yes i know i've been told that joke a thousand times i am allen uh i'm a relatively new member compared to fish i uh, pilot the 890, and that's really all I do. So, gentlemen, what are we doing? We're going to do some shenanigans in the verse. Um, we've, we've done some basic prep on what we wanted to do, uh, but uh, I think let's just get into it and play some Star Citizen. Oh, um, do we have a mission? I think we haven't even gotten that far yet, so let me pull up the old contract manager to see if I have anything. Um, oh and if not, Mr. Allen, you may have to... Uh, to jump in here but let me see what i got i do not have what we talked about so let's check if you do alan <laughs> yeah i guess what i don't have the one mission we wanted to do yep all right so i guess we'll just uh guard sight against hostiles because that's nice and easy Right, or cool. and we could do platforms. Platforms are fun too. It's a lot prettier than an underground facility. Yes. Good for me. I don't care. Let's go. Whatever right, it is. So I've got a single one. I'm showing it. Let's get on the road, gentlemen. Helmets on. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. So just to let everybody know, Mr. Allen here, he didn't give himself a lot of credit. He is one of the best pilots that we've got, as far as just general overall effectiveness on just about any craft you can think to throw at him. And today we'll be taking one of his uh, one of his favorites out, something that our org does that I, I would imagine is not unique. But Mr. Allen here is also the leader of our um, luxury tours. That we uh, that we have in HLN, he's a wonderful pilot. He's great at searching out all the best locations in the verse. And when he takes you on those tours, you can expect an all-inclusive experience aboard this beauty, his constellation Phoenix. This is an absolute Such beauty. A pretty I, ship. I love this ship. So, um, a little bit about me and how I play. So, I tend to not play objective. I'm absolutely in love with how the game looks and what you do in the game. So 90% of the time, I'm just walking around absolutely gawking at everything that the game is and never ever play objective. So I'll just do a quick walk around and then we can get on our way. You don't have, you, don't, you just don't really need to wait for me to walk around the whole ship. I just wanted to get a, a quick little view. Oh, hey, we got time. Mask in the beauty. We got time. Love it. 
And Alan, I'm really sad that your link is not in here anymore. Oh, yeah. I gotta get that in here. No Phoenix is complete without a Lynx. Who's up first? Looks like it's me. Well, I'm gonna get crushed first, then I'm gonna go. <laughs> Frickin' elevators. <clears throat> Alright, Mr. Deviant, after you. Thank you, sir. Am I gonna get swished as it comes down? It's okay. Yes, it's right, it's right. Right. Thank you. If you don't mind, I'll just sit in the old airliner seats while we wait and... Deviant and I can just uh, shoot the shit while oh, Alan, you lights. guide us gracefully to our target. No problem. So, Fish, HLN, give us a little bit of uh, what is HLN to begin with? Oh, wow. That's a hell of a question. Um, <laughs> HLN is a Humanitarian. It stands for Humanitarian Network Logistics Group or Humanitarian Logistics Network Group. Sorry, it's, it's a mouthful. I forget it every time I try to say it. Um, it's a multifaceted org that aims to strike an a balance, uh, the perfect balance, I may say, or we, at least we aim for it, between elements of RP and just casual gameplay at the same time. So. We, we focus and, and try to do everything inside the verse. We, we have three divisions, a tactical division, an operations division, and a support division, all full of members that specialize in, you know, the main gameplay loops that are currently within Star Citizen. Tactical likes to make things blow up. Operations likes to do things involved with industry. And support likes to do things with logistics, uh, medical, and all of that stuff in between. Um, the the divisions expand and will continue to expand in scope as more game loops come online but really um what quantifies us in a lot of ways is we really like to just help people in diverse like we put a lot of of time and effort into making other people's experience better and getting people on board and helping them understand the game and ha how to have the most fun in the game and then hopefully, after they spend a little time with us, they want to stay and have okay, more fun so, with us. All right, cool. So on that topic, right, um, I came into the Star Citizen verse just wanting to play the game, look at the beauty of the game. And I had no intention of like playing a fast game or big game. I wanted to do like really, really simple things. And to be honest, I have no idea how I ended up in the HLN group. I think I got lost one day and spammed out on the global chat. I was like, hey, can someone like pick me up? And I think it might have been Alan and Selko that picked me up. And they were like, hey, come hang out and play video games with us. And I was like, okay, cool, I'm down. They'll send me an, uh, a, a link to the Discord. And I think that's the history, dude. And I think I've been playing for like a month and it's the most fun I've ever had. And I think that's how I got into HLN. Alan, does that sound familiar or am I just like making stuff up? Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, so that said, um, being pulled into the organization literally has like catapulted me from being literally a nothing in the verse to someone who can actually come into the game and enjoy playing the game without having the... Um, What's the word? The like sheer panic of like dying and losing your stuff because you're a noob, because you have very limited resources, all of that kind of thing. So getting pulled into the HLN group was like the best thing ever for me because the amount of things that I've seen and participated in in the last month yeah. is, is it's dude, it's, it's impossible. Like it would have been absolutely impossible if I'd never met you guys. Well, you know, that's, that's a lot of what we focus on. You know, we've had this conversation a few times, uh, and it's actually a really common experience for a lot of our members. Um, they all here recently are starting out as people that are just coming into the game, or they, they're longtime backers that, are, that have come into the game, you know, like come back into the game after a long hiatus and they're kind of lost and they end up in a bad situation and they say something in global, and the next thing they know, there's 10 people that are just... <laughs> Hey, 
here we are for your rescue. And Dude, it's so sick. That's just how we roll a lot of times. We're always watching out for people. Like, oh, the elves or need so guidance sick. in the verse. I love it. And, like, everybody that I've met so far, dude, the most humble people ever. It's like, you can ask the dumbest questions, and people are like, oh, yeah, you just do this and this and this. And just, it just makes the experience so good because sometimes I have, like, the most insane paranoia where I'm, like, trying to do basic stuff and I'm, like, scared to ask. But, uh,. Yeah, it's just been so good. The only stupid question is the one that you don't ask. There we go. I love that so much. We'll take the we'll take the uh, the front elevator, gentlemen. It's yeah. a little bit faster than that cargo one. I don't know if we can get three, but we sure will fucking try. Prepare to die. <laughs> yeah, elevators right, claim more lives than Star Citizen. Elevators claim more lives than Star Citizen than bounty hunters, so. <laughs> Nice. All right, so I think between right, the uh, three of us, I have the worst loadout, so I'm just going to try I'm getting not shot to... already. Whoa, 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 whoa. Holy, Holy shit, balls. they weren't lying about the Squadron 42 <laughs> AI being in. Fuck around, dude. Holy shit, they don't fuck around. I'm already tier three to the chest. All right, eyes up, gentlemen. All right, so this is literally raw. This is what HLN Group does, and it's the most... Hello. I mean, Jesus, I wasn't Fuck expecting me, just dude. right out the gate, like... This is hardcore, this is like straight off the bat, dude. Well, if you're not entertained, I don't know what is gonna entertain you. Right, buddy. And there's two behind that barricade, and there's, we got one long who's just kind of poking. One just popped out of cover. Oh, oh well, I'm getting fucking lit up. Popping a med pen. Alan, how you doing over there? I'm good. This is what happens when the server FPS is actually decent. Oh shit, four just popped out of nowhere. Oh lord. I'm tier two to the chest. Uh, tier three to the head. I'm surprised I haven't died. Normally I'm the... I'm the noob, I die very, very quickly. Well, I'm used to Star Citizen of old with how long I've been playing this game um, and apparently that Star Citizen is DOA <laughs> with this new AI well it's kind of refreshing because uh, sometimes you just walk into a room and people are just sitting there backpedaling looking at you we still got one target here that I can see or that I can hear rather got him nice job gentlemen Yep, looks clear. Looks like we're good to move down. I have not tracked this mission like a total noob, so I have no idea how many people are left. Uh, what does it do? I Count down or up? It's 5 or 15, so is that 5 left or that it means kills 5? There's 5 left, so there, it starts off at 15 and then okay, there's, cool. it just goes down as you kill people. Did you find anything good, Alan? Yeah, there's a grenade launcher in there. Oh, nice. nice. Can I have that? Yeah, absolutely, because I'm already carrying two I lost guns. mine. Yeah, I don't need it. Yeah, yeah, yeah I lost mine, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm going to take a quick moment while we're in this elevator to uh, dope up on frickin' drugs. Don't do drugs, kids, unless you need to <laughs> and you're in Star Citizen. Um, Why can't you guys just leave me? Oh, there's no one here anyway. No, we're not. Wait for it. No, we're in the elevator, just waiting on you. Thank you, gentlemen. Alright, two in the back, one in the front. Person in the front, crouch. Alan, you're in the front. Wait, Do I got a, wait, I got a grenade launcher. Oh, right, okay, Alan's well, too late now, door's open. <laughs> oh, hello. Uh, uh, oh, 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 oh. Nice. I'm pushing left. Peeking corners. You got one long in the door. How is everyone? I'm alive. I'm good. 
You forgot one upstairs. Oh boy. So there's one left. And there's another grenade launcher in here. Jesus. Hello. What is this? Is? All right. Well, I'm not gonna let a good grenade launcher just go to waste. Yeah. Yeah, there are weapon racks in the county. Yeah, we'll just pop it in there. Oh, and it's a thunderclap, Ooh, which is exactly what a, that's a sniper. sniper rifle in there. I haven't that's seen that. That's the Atscav, it. orange Atscav, right? Uh, I think, yep. Yep. I love Good that. Uh, the Atscav is, is, is really cool. Um, I love that gun. All right, I think we're good to move back up to the top floor, gentlemen. All right, cool. Hold up. Looting. No, you're good. Yeah, I mean, I'm so happy that they brought these new platforms back in there. Like, we had them for a little while, like during 318, I think. And then all of a sudden they were just, uh, they were just yoinked out. And I think they just needed to work on them and actually make them easier to do. Because you used to have to fly down to Orison and then just track out to them hundreds of kilometers in Orison's atmosphere. And that made that just so painful. Uh... I'm so glad to have them back. And they're so they're so much better now, because there's actually variety in the buildings. Whereas before, there was they were pretty much the same building every time. Shit. Yeah, this gotta be easy. Yeah, I I'm currently walking okay. around with a grenade launcher, so. Uh, Adam. Alan, I'll let you take care of that guy. Ah, uh, cool. All right, we're done. <laughs> nice, mission accomplished, boys. Noise. Yes, that was sir. cool. That was a lot of fun. Oh, he's good to see, uh, good to see, <laughs> I mean, good to see the freaking squadron AI actually coming into the game now. I mean, they said they were doing it, but it's it's great to be on a server where you can actually notice the difference. Yeah, that was cool. That was kind of fun. Then, like surprising, like straight off the bat. How are you doing? Guys, yeah, at the moment we came out of the elevator, I just got beamed. Yeah, that's cool. I'm like, good lord. Like, I have two tier 3 injuries and a tier 2 injury. Alright, cool. Are we going to leave it all? Up. Um, we can, but I don't think it's necessary. We're pretty kitted. So. Uh, Alright, cool. I was just messing around. I just want to drop the gun off. Yeah, I'm going to drop the gun and the disc gun and the rip and rack up here, and, and we'll just move on. Boom. Cool, so one of the questions that I have it on the... It knocked me out of the... Uh, <laughs> not me out of the... Oh, you're back. Um, one, one, of the th one of the questions that I have sort of lined up is, uh, what do you do at HLN? Oh, well done. What um, do I do? Well, no, what do we do at HLN? So, like, I'm thinking from, like, a like a new player perspective. This is kind of what we do. So we do a little bit of this. Um, I've been involved in, in a number of these sort of, like, bunker slash platform missions, and these are quite fun. Um, I think the biggest one I've been in is, like, 10 people storm a bunker sort out some stuff that's kind of fun well i think they... one of the best it, it, it like examples of the normal thing that we Sorry, do or maybe not normal but the best the best of the best of what we do we actually did yesterday um you know with that 15 20 people uh locking down a location and just um you know um having a whole bunch of ground vehicles on the ground, having people in the air just fighting it out in the air and l launching, lobbing missiles at people and trying to get people to come fight. I, that was a great time. Oh, that yesterday. actually was that quite was... fun, yeah. That was my first time in a ballista. The ballista is such a fun experience for anybody that's never been in one before. Yeah, it was very cool. Um, I think I actually, I actually uh, got a few hits into that uh, reclaimer that showed up. Yeah, that's a that's a really um, that's a really fun one. Uh, I there's nothing like watching a size five or a size seven torpedo just cascade through the sky and then <laughs> boom, Dang. hearing that tick and and seeing the explosion like two or three kilometers away. Oh, fish! You didn't have to fill out the form. I'm. We are. Uh, that's okay, Vantless. Um, for everyone else that's hearing uh, Vantless's voice for the first time, this is Mr. Vantless, the head of our social media team. Vantless, Lieutenant Vantless. He, he, he oversees all of our um, social media operations and kind of is a, a watchful eye over our YouTube channel. Uh, Mr. Vantless, you don't know this because we're not in the right channel, so I do apologize. Um, but we are recording the podcast right now. Oh, shoot. That's my bad. 
I'm you're sorry. good, dude. Do you want to no, join? No, you're good. In? It's fine. You're more than welcome to join. I mean, it's more of a play the game, shoot the shit, and just have a have a talk about you know everything that comes to mind. Cool. And we just finished doing a uh, repel raid on Orison mission. It was a lot of fun. I got domed like four times. Didn't go down, but I'm full of injuries. I'm kind of proud of myself. I got out of that with <laughs> I'm alive. Yeah, no, you never went down a single time. You're you're yeah. getting better. Yay. I didn't suck as much. So, anymore. uh Captain Allen, where where are we on our way to now? Uh Seraph I'm gonna get you patched up. Okay. Sounds good to me. I definitely could use a visit to the dock. Excellent. Um so um Organites. You want to talk about Organites and what they're supposed to be and what they end up being. So, Organites, uh, to explain them a little bit, is the, it's like the one night of the week that HLN tries to get as many bodies in the game as physically possible at any given time. So, we, um, we, we put out messages throughout the week. We plan them. So typically they have some sort of theme to them. Like we're going to go to Ghost Hollow and we're going to sit there and do that mission and and see what happens. Or, hey, we're going to run a lot of cargo tonight and we're going to see how much money we can make running cargo all over the verse. Or um, mining night. We're going to go send two or three moles out into the verse and some scouts and we're going to go planet mining or asteroid mining or whatever we want to do mining. We do that, we do salvage from time to time, but basically it's a time where we try to get as many bodies in the game as we can and just do something together in a you know cooperative multi crew type of way. That's now a lot of times, as many people that might be listening can can imagine, trying to get twenty people in this game doing the same thing at the same time is a bit like herding cats, which is <laughs> mainly my what my job as vice admiral really turns into a lot of times is chief cat herder. Um, so it can be a little bit chaotic, but you know, actually recently our org nights are, are getting a lot, a lot easier here recently as everyone that's been new and we've, got, we've had a lot of membership increase over the last month or two. And it's, it's, it's beginning to settle out to the point where most people know what to expect and I don't have to work so hard anymore. So that's what they, they can turn into a bit of chaos but typically we'll do that one thing and org nights can last anywhere from two two three hours all the way up into like six hours sometimes so we don't often do the same thing the entire time we'll we'll, we'll move around we'll we'll switch out from doing different things and then as the the numbers grow the numbers fall we just kind of figure it out star citizen's really open-ended so you can kind of do whatever you want for the most yeah, so, part yeah so my my first org night um I looked at the Discord and I was like, oh my god, these guys are like so waxed at like what they do. Like this is a proper military organization, which yes it is, but at the same time, don't get us wrong, like it's really just a bunch of nerds playing video games. <laughs> so yeah. we do we do <laughs> our fair share yeah. of shenanigans. There is quite a, a lot of, of shenanigans that go on, and and I think that's one of the best things about HLN is we have this semblance, like this, it kind of seems a lot more serious than it actually is. <laughs> now, when the going gets rough, everybody knows to shut up and listen, and you know, you know, we want to, we don't want to all die because we're just talking so much, or you know, like we, no one can get any information because everyone's just monkeying around. Yeah. But at the same time, it's still a really loose experience with like the hint of actually being serious about what's going on yeah so so i gotta i gotta sort of give you praise there like you're sort of uh very good at um the, there'll be moments of the game where people are just going absolutely wild and you'll be like all right cool guys let, let's just chill for a second let's coordinate something and then you go into that sort of military mindset like all right cool i want you to do this i want you to do that let's go in there this is the objective get in get out clear communication keep your eyes up let's go that gameplay that that switch between just being absolute children and then switching to being like an kind of a military org and actually smashing stuff out and getting stuff done is actually something to behold and it's actually a whole lot of fun to be part of that yeah um i can't tell you how many org nights um i have had to utter the phrase shut up shut up shut up shut up <laughs> shut up shut up shut up and just 
do that until we finally get silence in the room um because there's a lot of exciting moments but you know it's it's a lot of fun we we tried it we tried it like i said when we were you know giving a little bit of a a a line of what is hln we do our absolute best to strike that balance between some semblance of being serious and and still remaining a loose casual group of people where you don't feel like you're going to work when you're coming to play a video game all right talking about loose casual i completely forgot what we're doing um why are we at seraphim again um mostly because your vice admiral has a tier two chest injury a tier three arm injury yeah, and a tier three head injury fixing fish all right cool good chat as you were Nothing fixing fish the podcast <laughs> <laughs> fixing fish the fucking podcast idol let's go yeah, I know, right? What is the title? So of Vaintless. The oh, well, that's a great time to to identify ourselves again. Go ahead, Deviant. What's the title of this podcast? What is the title? Oh, well, I sort of shot the title of the podcast being the HLN Citizen Cast, and in the HLN Citizen Cast, we play some video games, shoot the shit, and talk about stuff in the game, and about the game, and about the development of the game, and wherever the conversation goes. We're just here to have fun and make a podcast. Yep. Cool. All right, I'm checking in at the uh, checking in at the old dock in a box here in uh, Seraphim. I'll be out back to you all shortly. As soon as it decides to give me a room, I will never understand why that freaking message has to take so damn long for them to tell me what room to go to. They used um, to have a bug where your room would pop in for a split second before oh god going back and i loved it so much because it would be accurate like you'd get the room mm -hmm. and you didn't have to wait 20 years yeah it's such a long wait hey captain do we have uh, anything to drink on this ship no we drank at all uh, well, that's a typical booze. hln that's a typical hln experience all the booze is always gone <laughs> i got some grease for you oh no i was looking for a beer um I think I have, uh, what do I have? I have Vestal. Vestal water. That's definitely not beer. I know. Hey, it can be after a few. Yeah, right. Oh, right, I'm you still on You can overhydrate. Oh, boy, that's a long way away. Just start heading towards, uh, heading towards Crusader. Yep, and I'm still in my civvies. Uh, hey, nice. we love the civvies. I picked out a great outfit for se for getting stuff at Seraphim, actually. I think. Limited options. All right, lads. Oh, this is cool. Uh, We've got a someone... data pad on the table here. That's pretty hey, neat. Like that? I love the little touches that Alan does on his touring ships. Nice. I like it. Can I get a Can I get a identification of what pad we're on, please? Uh, uh yes, sir. I got it. I think it was pad two. I'm gonna give her a shot here. Yep, pad two. Pad two. Good. We'll be back in there shortly. And then I assume we'll head over to our second location. Our second location for the evening, yes. Alright, so talking about HLN, we spoke about Org Nights. Um we vaguely touched on how I ended up here, how Ellen ended up here. As an outsider, maybe as a new player to the game, maybe watching this, if you were interested in, I don't know, joining HLN, how would you go about doing it, Fish? Link in the well, description. there's going to be Discord links and everything like that down in the, at the bottom of this, since we're going to put this podcast out on YouTube to begin with. Um, that's the absolute easiest way, is to jump in our Discord and say, hey, I listen to the podcast and I really want to give it a shot, and uh, how, what do I do? And, well, when you get into our Discord, the, the easiest way for you to get that information is there's a new member forum that you can click on in our Discord, and that will just give you the freaking spiel. Uh, tons of detail about what goes on, uh, more details about each division, what our scheduling is like for org nights, and, you know, a little bit about our ranks, a who's who, so you can, like, gauge who you need to talk to about everything, and just, you know, when you see some of us in the VC, just hop in. 
And you worked very hard on it. I, I, I worked very hard <laughs> on that new member form. It took me like two days. Um, so yeah, just hop in. Everyone that you talk to in HLN is is super friendly. We pride ourselves on having a great community here. So just hop in in the Discord, and then we'll we'll get you get you where you need to be. And uh, please don't be uh, put off if there's something going on and it's a bit crazy because. Um, yeah, it can be a bit wild if you just sort of drop into in the verse and there's like seven or eight people in there just going yeah. ham on the soundboard it'll it'll yeah, pass it, give it a minute <laughs> it'll pass just just give it like approximately 30 seconds and then but m most of the time we are pretty good about recognizing a noob face so and and it shouldn't be too much chaos but we'll see So just to let everyone know, we're currently in transit to our next location uh, for the evening of this podcast. But, you know, it's um, it's uh, an important, probably one of the biggest things that we're going to talk about on this episode. And that's some of the new ships that have kind of come into the game. Um, we've got some examples of the new ships for uh, for you to watch and look at while you're listening to us talk about it. Uh, we are missing one, and we'll get to that when we get down there, um, as Mr. Allen expertly pilots us to the location. Yeah, that's what we're going to talk about next. We're going to talk about ships, everyone's favorite topic. Everybody loves ships. Everybody loves pixels. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. certainly are pretty and fun to fly. Uh, all right, cool. So we took a little bit of a break, and uh, we are now joined here by Ventless. So I think Ventless did a vague intro to himself, uh, but now that you're here, uh, Ventless, welcome. Welcome. All right. Hi. <laughs> all right, cool. So one of the other things that I wanted to chat about... Um, we are filming this during IAE 2953 week. Um, we spoke a little bit about our org nights. La the last org night that we did, we actually all went to IAE. And it was a bit of a riot because there was like, what, like 20 of us in the Discord? Yeah, there was a lot of people. There was a ton of us. It was like 15 to 20 minimum. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Um, it was a little bit chaotic at times but uh, for the most part it was pretty cool um so yeah iae lots of new stuff coming out um it just so happens that we have a couple of those new things out over there so i think we're gonna take a walk over there and while we're walking over there we can discuss uh new ships i like ships everybody like part, ships gentlemen. pixels i think we yeah. shall um this elevator is going to get really crowded for uh, three people or for four people, so I'm going to go on my own. Goodbye. Bye. And I'll wait for you downstairs. So yeah, no. For for any Check new him. players that are you know wondering what is IAE, IAE is like the biggest. Um, in-game Star Citizen event that is not like a dynamic event like combat or whatever focused. It's like a it happens every year at the same time and it's the uh, Intergalactic Aerospace Expo. It's basically the time of the year where all of the manufacturers in the game get together and they um, showcase all of their ships and they put them all on display at a big expo hall and you can see them in person you don't even have to own them you can rent every ship you know and and try everything out and it's also where they unveil the best in show for that year so a couple months prior to IAE they they host something called the ship showdown and the ship showdown is basically where CIG the developer of Star Citizen puts a bunch of ships into the game or into a list into like a tournament style list and the community votes and it goes through a tournament style matchups until we until we're left with a winner. That winner is the best in show ship of that year, and then that ship, along with the three other ships that make it to like the semifinals, um, get a special skin that is exclusive to that year. After after it's given out, it's never purchasable. It's never um, you know any like that. Any it's not attainable after that initial run, and that's. That's one of the main things that happens at IAE, and we're about we're about uh, four or five days into it at this point at the time of recording, so we're still pretty early. It's about a ten day, uh, ten day event more or less, 
as all the manufacturers get their day to be in the expo hall. So yesterday uh, was what? Aegis Day? What day are we on today? Today Origin. is the Today is the Origin Day. Origin has just entered the uh, the expo today. And tomorrow is Drake. Tomorrow is the very, very, very highly um, awaited Drake Day. I'm very excited to see if they've been sneaking something around outside of the Drake Expedition um, to see uh, if we get anything super new. But uh, talking about things that are super new... We're coming up on our on our four ships that are or four vehicles that we're going to showcase in this episode. Um, all of these vehicles are new to this patch, the IAE patch. Um, uh, we've got two variants of a storm tank. We've got a brand new alien starter ship, and we have the Spirit C1, uh, which is the cargo entry into the Spirit series of ships. All right, so where should we start? Someone else say something. <laughs> should we start? <laughs> should we start with the little guys? Um, sure. All right, cool. Um, all right, Alan, cool. why don't you tell us about the uh, the Storm AA since you've been uh, you used one like literally for hours yesterday? Uh, sure thing. So it it's basically just a smaller version of the Nova, and it has sixty four little missiles and sixteen slightly bigger missiles and they can fire them out like this <laughs> perfect and just and we... insanely quick and that was eight missiles right in one salvo yep eight size ones so, yeah eight size one missiles per salvo if, if you like so like it's um it's a lot of small missiles i mean yeah they're tiny they're the smallest size missiles in the game but they are many in number and 64 is absolutely insane for a ground vehicle. So there's 64 in this little thing. That's actually kind of There's fantastic. 64 size ones and then 12 um, size twos in that 16. machine there. I mean, I'm sorry, 16 size twos in that machine. And it's basically just a variant of the brand new uh, Tumbral Storm tank. Uh, the normal Storm we've got here with us as well, and Deviant will take a look at that as after he show, uh, finish showing you the, the interior cockpit of the Storm AA. Uh, that's the one that I used a lot yesterday, and, and the main difference between the two, and really the only difference, is the weaponry that they come with. The Storm AA focuses on being anti-air. It's got a ton of missiles to shoot down ships with. The normal Tumbral Storm has a bespoke size 3 dual laser repeater that's on the top that has its own damage metrics, 3.5 kilometer range, and it packs quite the punch for a ground vehicle weapon. Um, the storm is fast, it's maneuverable, um, it's, it's a light tank, so you know putting it up against something like a Nova may not be something that you want to do. Um, you can outmaneuver a Nova, but I don't think you're going to outrun that Slayer cannon unless you're a damn good uh, ground vehicle pilot. And there you go. You're probably getting a view of what that uh, gun looks like as it moves around and fires, as Lieutenant Vaintless is showing us. Um, it's a really cool ground vehicle, though. It's, it's got to be my favorite ground vehicle that's in the game currently. I love the look of it. it makes me think of the Batmobile. <laughs> oh, it's so much like the Batmobile, actually. But yeah, that's our that's our two tumbral storms. We've got one with a gun and one with a ton of missiles. Um, probably the biggest showstopper of the event, though, uh, so far, is this other towering monolith of a starter ship. This is the uh, Gatax Spulen, which is a brand new straight to flyable ship that came out with the IAE patch. Um, Gatak is an alien manufacturer. Uh, the alien race that um, manufactures this ship is known as the Xi'an. It's a very big, very well-equipped starter ship. It can carry, I think that's six SCU of cargo in little bitty boxes. It's got an interior space and a living quarters with a bed all, you know, with all the trimmings, a bathroom with all the trimmings. 
It's got a fully physicalized component bay. It really emphasizes the use of gravity technology, as you'll see when you go into the ship and look around. You'll just see tons of grav tech. Um, Alan, I know that this this is your uh, Spulen in particular, so why don't you tell us a couple of your favorite things about it? Well, first off, I just love the design. It is unlike anything else in the game, and it is truly one of the... Uh, it's, it's a work of art, in essence. I love the purple lighting. Uh, it is very practical, with weapon racks and a suit locker, a bed, everything you'll ever need. It's a great starter. It also has three guns, 12 missiles, so it's pretty uh, medium armed. It's well armed. For a starter, that's well armed. That's, that's yeah. really well armed for a starter. And uh, uh, so, what about that vertical takeoff system? What do you, what do you, how do you feel about that? <laughs> so, uh, before, definitely, before, uh, sorry, Alan, go ahead. No, 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 you go ahead. Oh, okay. And it definitely takes some getting used to because when you're landing, you go back instead of down. But uh, it's really not that bad. Well, that's cool. I mean, I've I've heard some some interesting takes back and forth from the people that are that are using it and flying it. I'm a fan of it as well. I have one. It's it's a really cool all around little ship with tons of just multi purpose capability and really comfortable to use i think I'm, i've also i haven't flown mine that much but you can jump in on this alan and anybody else that has one um i've also heard it's insanely maneuverable in all at, like all environments yes it has uh more maneuvering thrusters than an f8c lightning which is a uh, extremely maneuverable and overpowered fighter so <laughs> it's if it was a bit smaller it'd actually be a great racing ship yeah, hey, Alan. Why I'm don't sure you come it's... in here? I want to. I want to show the best part of this. Like getting getting into the pilot seat is is something, but like watching someone get into the pilot seat and go up is actually pretty wicked cool. Thing. Yeah. So you know, it's just um, it's a really cool alien ship. We don't have a lot of alien ships in Star Citizen that are not like combat oriented. This is our first like alien ship that is not some form of combat whether it's a drop ship or a fighter or you know something like that this is our first entry by an alien race into a a multi-purpose non-combat ship so it's it's definitely a great addition and i i can't agree more mr allen on you know how much of a work of art it is i absolutely love the the the, the look and feel of everything about this ship All right, I'm coming down. So once you guys finish up there, we'll move on to the last very, very new thing that we have here uh, from from the IAE patch. Um, so I'll do a little bit of a preamble here. I mean, it's a ship we've known was coming for a while. We got uh, one of its sister ships in its same class, the A1, earlier in this year, which was the bomber variant of the Spirit series. But this is the brand new C1 Spirit, which is the cargo variant entry of the Spirit family, hosting a size 2 quantum drive, um, one size 2 shield, and... A decent myriad of weapons, even on the cargo variant. You've got four uh, size three weapons, one fixed to a turret on the nose of the ship, two up the top that are fixed by default. The turret is obviously always gimbaled. A very sleek and fan favorite ship. I have no doubt that this thing's going to make quite the run uh, in one way or the other in the uh, ship showdown next year now that it's actually in the game. It's also equipped with a very new feature as well that we'll talk about while we've got the ship here, which is vehicle tractor beams. This The ship's got a moving, rotating, position-changing, fully controllable by the co-pilot seat vehicle tractor beam that can greatly help um, with loading cargo into this thing. And this thing can carry a decent amount of cargo too. It can, it can carry 64 SCUs of uh, cargo. And it's even capable of holding the largest boxes in the game in the 32 SCU box. So it is uh, it is quite the entity, as you can see with uh, Mr. Allen moving around that uh, that gun. But actually, something that I'd really like to, to show, and I'm going to run over here and grab it to see how it does. 
as I'm going to grab my storm and pull it over in range and let everybody see just how much of a, a grip the, these new vehicle-sized tractor beams can, uh, can put on the environment. You guys have any thoughts on the C1 while we're waiting on me to get over there? Dude, this is probably the coolest thing that I've seen in a while. This, this is way handier than like another turret. Well, you know, that's that's been a little bit of a point of contention um, among a lot of people here recently. Has been, uh, can the C1 actually defend itself well and without having that turret? A, a lot of its direct competition is um, things like the Cutlass series and the, the Freelancer series. The Cutlass series in particular, you can't do it yet. You're going to have to give me a second. The Cutlass series in particular, having its turret and a tractor beam and similar weapon complement... It's kind of um, kind of at a disadvantage when it comes to firepower for a ship of its size, um, but it more than makes up for it, I think, in in like usability and uh, it probably of all of its competitors, it definitely has the best tractor beam placement. Oh, so now it's purple. What did it say to you there? Uh, it's yellow. Look it's at it. Barely awesome. left the bone. So it's just barely liftable by that one. Can you actually get it off the ground, or is it just uh, too much gravity? So yeah, you yeah, can push a, it and pull it. And... A bit too much. I mean, but you know, even though it's just a bit too much, thinking about it though, that that's a whole ass tank. <laughs> that's a tank. That it is. That yeah, is it, literally it, a armored combat vehicle that these vehicle tractor beams are able to, you know, push around and pull around, and then. With all the variation in size of vehicle tractor beams, I mean, the, this is not even the biggest one. You've got ones like the the ones on the whole C that are absolutely giga chad gigantic, um, and and then the caterpillar has an, another size up as well from this one. So I'm imagining those could probably um, do quite a lot. All right. So from the new player's perspective, um, a lot of the components on the ships you can swap out and stuff. Can you change this on the, this ship? I've not tried, but when we yeah. went to the the Cruel One station, um, we saw that there were quite a few tractor beams available for for purchase. So I'm wondering if there are variations not only in size, but maybe even different versions in the same size of tractor beams. To see if you could if you could get different ones. There are ones for precision and power, I believe. Oh, cool! Well, that's awesome. I wonder what the, I guess the precision ones give you a bit more fine-tuned control. Maybe they have bigger um, zones of movement, and then the power ones can just lift more at the expense of not being able to handle as much uh, um, jostling. I'm not sure. We'll have to investigate that a little further. Uh, Alan, can you drag it closer to the ship, or is it is it is it a little bit un unwieldy? Uh, let me try I gotta love the sandstorms on Daymar, though. <laughs> Here we go. There oh, yeah. Is. All day long. There you go. Yeah, you How can cool move it, push that? it, pull it. We could pick up freaking tanks in the game now. Yeah, no, for a frame of reference, this thing is 90.6 tons. 90.6 tons. Well, why don't you let go for just a second? And bring it back over here, please. Well, actually, now, let's see. Something that I wanted to talk about as well, since I've got one now, is also new with uh, the IAE patch, is our is our new fully rifle-sized uh, dedicated tractor beam. Something that's a lot more powerful than the one that we've been used to up until this point, which was basically our super bad multi-tool tractor beam. Now we've got one that's a, a whole... Um, handheld object, but it looks like, from what I can tell here, that this is not nearly strong enough to move the terminal storm. Yeah, I don't know if you're going to move that. But just so you're showing it to everybody, you can see it. So, in comparison, and, uh, is the old tractor beam. Yes. And that's the new bad boy. So there you go. 
now you've kind of seen it all. Nice. You've seen uh, a lot of the big the big changes that are uh, here in Star Citizen. And there's supposedly some sort of um, capability of multiple tractor beams to be able to lift heavier objects. So, like, Alan could pull out his bigger one and maybe pull out my me have my bigger one out as well. And we might be able to both get tagged onto this thing and pick it up. No. Uh, it's Almost. lifting not, on not my always. screen. Oh, it's lifting on my screen. We're picking it up. <laughs> That's so cool. Out. So this is a this is an intended feature as well. It may not be particularly working um, in this particular instance, but you know, it wouldn't be Star Citizen if everything worked properly. Um, but you know, um, to round out and really kind of complete our conversation about tractor beams, uh, and the one ship that we don't have here for you to see that is brand new. Uh, for this patch is the Argo SRV. Uh, the Argo SRV is a space ship with a with the largest tractor beam uh, possible for to, that can be mounted on a ship. And its de designated purpose is towing and moving ships around, moving gigantically large objects. And it is even capable of attaching to vessels and towing them in quantum drive. Now, when so that you say is, gigantically um, large vehicles and things, how gigantic is gigantic? The only ship that it cannot move, to my knowledge, in like in quantum, is an 890 jump. It can move okay. the Carrick, it can move the Reclaimer. For some reason it can move the Reclaimer, I'm 90% sure. But it cannot move the 890 jump well, and it cannot t tow it in quantum, but it can do the reclaimer now that could be wrong someone can fact check me in the comments but i'm about 90 percent sure it can move the reclaimer just can't move the 890 so that's the only ship we don't have here we'll try to put some images up for you so you can see it but that kind of rounds out all of the new stuff of uh you know the iae patch now speaking patch one of the things that i am really really interested in is ship trespass because i don't know what it looks like so considering there's four of us here we're in a party um what if we kick one of us out of the party I and volunteer. then... Cool. Well, okay, pause. If we want the people watching the video to see it, we're going to want it to be you, Deviant, because you're recording. Okay, ah. that, that makes sense. Sorry, Vant. <laughs> so, sorry, Vant. But, That's Alan, fine. would you do the honors and bop him out? And I'll go uh, in my ship since my C1's just right here. All right, cool. So your, all your markers have dis disappeared, so I am the stowaway. And I want to see what this is going to look like. So supposedly we shouldn't get a crime stack, correct? Supposedly. We'll see what happens on his screen and what it, what he says when he walks in here. All right, cool. So I'm, I'm entering the ship. I'm coming up Don't the ramp. Worry. So warning. Fishbowl's private property. Enter at own risk. Ooh. So right. now you are trespassing on our ship, and we could kill you, and theoretically, no crime stat would be committed. Yeah, so, so Alan, I, 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 charging I, I, guns. <laughs> I feel like uh, either me or Alan should shoot him, not kill. Shoot, not kill. Shoot him to see if we get a crime stat, because it seems pretty obvious that it won't give you one, but will it give your party mates one? It should not give the party mates, but, um, I mean... Let's test it. I didn't get a crime stat. Don't know it, Alan. He's down. Alright. I think I'm good. Yeah, I'd say that pretty much confirms it, that your party members also won't get a crime stat, but I don't know if it gave you... At any point on your screen, Deviant, did it give you any, like, press charges indicators whatsoever? No, it actually didn't. So all it's given me right. is I'm in private property. I got shot. I have a tier two to the chest now, but that's it. Oh, that's so it, it just tells me private property. Interesting. That's so really cool. I'm interested to see if I get out. Let's see what happens here. So if I get out, private property disappears immediately. I heard something that if I run out of the ship, you could shoot me now and not yes. get a crime stat but i wonder what the timing yes. on that is 
there's really no way to tell. I would imagine there's a lot of fringe cases with this. But, you know, apparently you're supposed to be able to chase somebody out of your your ship and into theirs, and you would still be able to kill them right, without a crime stop. Uh, do we want to give it a try, or...? I mean, I can chase you out. I think it would be safer in this case for it to be me and not Alan or Vantless, because we don't want to... We don't want to tempt fate with the old CS today. <laughs> All right, cool. So, so should, we, should we do this? Just right on out, and we'll see what happens. All right, cool. I'm so you are leave. out of the ship. Okay, I'm out of the ship. No longer trespassing. And I'm going to shoot you in the leg and the chest. I guess uh, I am incapacitated. So I got a, I got a notice that was like press right bracket to dismiss, but the notice is empty. That could just be one of the random things that Star Citizen does to you. Cool. Sometimes just random notices. What about now? Have you gotten anything since you've been here in this state? Nope. So I'm still incapacitated. I've got a, no options to press charges or anything like that, so that's kind of cool. Get out of my ship! But yeah, now you shoot him. Now you can, now you can defend your ship and and go out. The one thing that I wish they would add, and it's such a shame, is that I want no more armistice zones in my ship now. I don't want to be locked out of pulling my weapon if I'm in a hangar. I know that the, the trespasser would also be locked out of pulling their weapon in a hangar, but I want to be able to take my guns out and put them on the racks and all that stuff from the safety of a hangar, mm. so that I don't have to leave an armistice zone to put all my stuff where I want it to be, and then uh, you know, also, just stand still for just a minute, buddy, I'll get you uh, patched up temporarily. Thanks, bud. Um, question. From your perspective, when the trespasser enters, does it give you a notice at all? No, and that's the whole point, right? Like, it's, okay. uh... Oh, my God, Alan. You can end up making me overdose this man because you're over here being... You snooking, you're There you go. So, yeah, no, I completely and totally forgot what we were talking about because Alan just derailed my entire train of thought. Oh no, so I, I just asked, um, when the trespasser enters the ship, do you get any notice? No message. Were, yeah. No. Okay, so no, no. message. You are, now sne you are now sneaky breaky. Alright, cool. That's kind of cool. Oh, well, uh, you I just locked the deviant in the ship. Nice job, Alan. <laughs> Lock him in! Step away on board! Don't let him escape! Just takes out the storm and just blows you to high heaven. <laughs> All right, cool. Oh, don't spoil oh, uh, it. Could I get a could I get a party invite? Good sure thing, Mr. Allen. Well, you know, I think we've covered all the topics that we really wanted to talk about. Oh yeah. Um, for more information on HLN, we'll have links in the description to our Discord and our website and all all of the necessary things. Um. If you're curious about our org night to IAE, uh, Mr. Vaintless here is uh, working on a video that documented that documented that trip. So uh, look, be on the lookout for that and uh, and further episodes of this podcast. We just you know kind of talk, shoot the shit, and show you stuff in game and have a good time. Yeah, well, it's been real, guys. Cheers, everybody.